I don't dial 911. All right. I will afterwards to say, come get this dead guy out of my house. He's bleeding out and he's messing up my carpet. That's David Clark. Clark is now spearheading a pro-Trump super PAC, serving as a spokesman and senior advisor. Although Clark is a registered Democrat, he hasn't met a conservative policy that he doesn't love. Folks, we are talking about a new level of stupid from the American left. Clark's career in law enforcement began in 1978 at the Milwaukee Police Department. He was a patrol officer for 11 years and then became a homicide detective in 1989. He was gradually rising up through the ranks of enforcement. In 2002, Clark was appointed as the sheriff of Milwaukee County, Wisconsin, a role which lasted 15 years. During his tenure as sheriff, he quickly reserved the seat under the microscope after sparking up an array of different controversies. Under Clark's supervision, countless rapes and deaths took place in his county jail. In six months, four people in his Milwaukee jail died, including a newborn baby. This prompted an investigation led by Milwaukee County auditors. He's the lead character in a B-minus action movie. Clark's lack of leadership and responsibility showed. In July of 2016, a newborn baby died at the Milwaukee County Jail after the mother was forced to give birth on her cell room floor. The mother alleged that when she tried to notify guards that her water broke, she was laughed at. Her suit claims she was not taken to the hospital until six hours after the birth. After Clark's jail shut off the water supply to a man's cell for seven straight days, he died of dehydration. His death was ruled a homicide. The suit alleged that by April 23rd, he was too weak to yell or bang on his window. He was simply lying naked on his cell floor, barely able to move, severely dehydrated, literally dying of thirst. After hearing six days of testimony, the jury found probable cause that seven of Clark's employees had committed a crime. Back in 2013, a pregnant 19-year-old woman was raped repeatedly by a guard. And when she gave birth to her child, she was constrained by shackles. Charges were dropped as the guard pled no contest to lesser charges. But instead of acknowledging these allegations, Clark sidestepped his way out of accountability and into the national spotlight, stumping for Trump on just about any station that would have him on. Well, I'm encouraging blacks. They got two choices. I'm just encouraging them. It's their vote. The vote Donald Trump, like he said, give him a chance, what do you have to lose, or stay home. Clark's views stretch from believing Planned Parenthood should be renamed Planned Genocide to believing that. There is no police brutality in America. We ended that back in the 60s. He sparred with Don Lemon over the Black Lives Matter movement, a movement that Clark once said was forming an alliance with the Islamic State to destroy America. This anti-cop sentiment from this hateful ideology called Black Lives Matter has fueled this rage against the American police officer. I predicted this two years ago. It's clear which side of the aisle Clark is on. He was invited to speak at the RNC where he was greeted with several applause breaks from espousing his notorious red meat rhetoric. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to make something very clear. Blue Lives Matter in America. But those are just his thoughts. In a radio ad, Clark actually urged people in harm's way to, instead of calling the police, simply just fight back. With officers laid off and furloughed, simply calling 911 and waiting is no longer your best option. You can beg for mercy from a violent criminal, hide under the bed, or you can fight back. Aside from using racial slurs against the CNN commentator, Clark took on the entire black community in general. Let me tell you why blacks sell drugs and involve themselves in criminal behavior instead of a more socially acceptable lifestyle. Because they're uneducated, they're lazy, they're morally bankrupt. With this resume, he was allegedly offered a job in the Trump administration. The DHS never confirmed that, but it didn't matter. Things fell apart after a report surfaced that the sheriff had plagiarized parts of his master's thesis. He said he wasn't going to take the job that was maybe offered to him. Clark's approval rating was steadily declining. It hit 31% before he ultimately resigned from his post in August of 2017. Milwaukee County Sheriff David Clark has resigned effective at midnight, and that announcement came late this afternoon. Clark is now heavily involved in a pro-Trump super PAC. And although he isn't cashing government paychecks like he had hoped, 
he has become a staple in conservative media and a main mouthpiece for his president. It doesn't look like he's going anywhere but up.